have that view over there. That's just pretty awesome. That's almost as awesome as watching that Mike Les guy on YouTube. That is one good looking tractor and grain cart. Hello YouTube, I am heading up to Michigan's Upper Peninsula, otherwise known as the UP, for a snowmobile trip with a couple friends. But first we have to stop at Tony's Restaurant in Birch Run, Michigan. If you've never been to Tony's Restaurant, you definitely need to check this place out. They have some ginormous servings of food. You can get a BLT sandwich here that has one pound of bacon. All right, we are starting to roll up into the North Country here, so I'm coming up here with two friends, my friends Dale and Scott. Dale is driving his new Chevy truck. We got Scott's Legend trailer hooked up. I hauled my snowmobile up to their place, loaded it in here, and off we go. We're just getting into Mackinac City here, getting ready to cross the Mackinac Bridge, and how many of you have been across this? The Mackinac Bridge is part of Interstate 75 and connects Michigan's lower and upper peninsulas. This bridge started construction in May of 1954 and opened in November of 1957. This bridge is just shy of 5 miles at 4.995 miles. And the only other way to the Upper Peninsula before this bridge was to go clear around Lake Michigan and come up through Wisconsin. Before the bridge, you had to use a ferry to get back and forth. But anyways, we're going across the bridge here, and this is an awesome bridge if you've never been across it. This bridge at the top is 552 feet, and there is 155 feet of clearance underneath the bridge in certain spots. I've been across the bridge many times. I've had a lot of good snowmobile trips up here in Michigan's UP, and my Aunt Lisa and Uncle John have also lived in Marquette, Michigan for a lot of years. There is a toll to cross the bridge here with the pickup truck and trailer. It was $8. And I'm told if you're not comfortable driving your own vehicle across this bridge, you can actually have the bridge authority drive it across for you. They will also haul your snowmobile across. So if you're snowmobiling in the lower peninsula and want to get over to the other side, they do have a trailer service to carry your snowmobile across. Uh, as you can see, the water is not completely frozen here. It is definitely not recommended you snowmobile across here. But I remember one year we rode up to Mackinac City and there was actually some guys that rode across here. I personally would not recommend that and I personally will never do that. And I'm pretty sure the authorities would not recommend you do that either. Welcome to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Our destination was Newberry, Michigan, which is about an hour and a half from the bridge or so. We stayed at America's Best Value Inn there, which is just on the outskirts of Newberry. There's a lot of snowmobilers here, as you can see. You can ride right out of the parking lot, and the trail was just like a mile from here. So, real easy access to get a lot of different directions. There was also a good restaurant bar right by the hotel named Joshua James. And uh, just had a good uh, few solid days of riding up here, as you are going to see. Uh, they got some decent snow here. Should be in for a good few days. Let's get these sleds unloaded. And I gotta ride with these skidoo guys.
until we got up here to Newberry, got checked in the hotel, got the snowmobiles unloaded. It was later on in the afternoon. We did not get to ride a lot, but we uh, we rode a little bit. We rode in the town of Newberry, went to Timber Charlie's. Great restaurant here, let me tell you. I've been here before. Good place to stop on a snowmobile right along the trail, so definitely recommend that. We did do some night riding. Uh, rode about 60 miles on the first day. Had some good riding. Didn't get any footage of that, but uh, hey, there's a lot of days ahead. And here we are Thursday morning, getting the sleds out, uh, ready to hit the trails. I think we're in for a big day. We plan on covering uh, a lot of the UP today. We're going to kind of head over to Cedarville and see where else it takes us. So stay tuned. Our first stop of the day is in Trout Lake. We're going to fill up the snowmobiles before we head on to the next destination. And the bridge we are on is going over top of Interstate 75. I'm told this bridge was built just for the snowmobile trail.
We're heading into the town of Cedarville, Michigan. It's about lunchtime, so we're gonna get some lunch here at one of the restaurants. And you just see the craziest things out here. I did not have my GoPro on. There was a FedEx truck that was stuck on the snowmobile trail. I think somebody's GPS took them down the wrong road. I felt bad for the driver, so I did not want to stop and get my camera and take a picture of it, but it was actually pretty funny. And here we are at Angio's. I hope I said that right. Great place to eat. And welcome snowmobilers. Snowmobilers are a big part of the economy up here in the winter time. You know what? Uh... When I go to a restaurant and they have a Reuben, it's hard for me to get anything else. And this place has a great Reuben, let me tell you. Ate lunch, went over to the gas station, fueled up again, and ready to put some more miles on. Clear over to the very eastern part of the UP to Detour Village. There is a ferry here that will take your snowmobile or vehicle, whatever, over to Drummond Island. And there's a trail system over there. I was told around 50 miles. But uh, anyways, we didn't do it today because it's already mid-afternoon here. And if we went over there and rode that loop, and it would probably be about 3 o'clock in the morning until we got back to the hotel. So we decided we're not going to do this today. But stay tuned towards the end of the video. Um, we did it on the last day. What a beautiful sunset up here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Top speed on my new 2021 Arctic Cat Riot 800 appears to be about 88 mile per hour. Now when I posted that on my Instagram, some people dogged on me about it, but you know what guys? This is not geared like a snowmobile with 129 or 121 inch track. I've had some 600s that go faster than this, 
but 88 mile an hour with the 146 inch track and the deep plugs is plenty fast. Fast enough for me, that's for sure. And there's a few people out there who think the cool thing to do is make fun of guys that ride Arctic Cats, so whatever. I think you're jealous, personally. We made it back to Trout Lake about 8 o'clock, so we stopped here for supper at the Buckhorn. Got an open-faced turkey sandwich. It was pretty good. Had a good day, and uh, this is kind of a neat bar here, I'll tell you. So here is the map off my GPS, what we logged this day. That's everywhere we rode for a total of... 254.2 miles. So that's a pretty good day of snowmobile, and that's burning some gas and uh, putting some time in. Go take a look at the groomer here. That's an older one. Oh, yeah, an 8120T. Yeah. Heck yeah. Seventy-two go to Rudyard. Then we take that little thing up there, and then 480 gets up here to Strong. So we can go this way. But I don't want to go through Hilbert because it's all freaking road. Take eight and go like this to Paradise. You know what I'm saying? Right. 480 to eight in Paradise. I think Lewis and Clark got it all figured out which way we're headed. So we're coming up on the town of Rudyard, Michigan. The snow is really good here. It's just, you couldn't ask for it to be any better. But anyways, part of the trail system went down this road through a farm. And setting by the road was this Massey Ferguson 300 combine with doles. So although this is a snowmobile video for me, it's still got some farm footage in it. So that's always good. Anyways, we are going to head to Strong's and then work our way up to Paradise, Michigan. Another fuel stop. Right before we got here, I seen some what looked to be some good off-trail riding, so hope to make it back up here sometime and get off the trail. Dale and Scott don't get off the trail too much, so anyways, I had to keep up with them, but we stopped here for lunch. I think this was in Holbert or near Holbert, I'm not sure, but I ordered the Swamp Burger, and let me tell you, the Swamp Burger is good. It's a burger with cheese, ham, and bacon, and all that good stuff, really good. So we rode to Paradise, and we were going to go up to Whitefish Point, but... It's above freezing and things are deteriorating quick. And this is a high traffic area, but you can see the trail is getting pretty thin here. Uh, it's got a lot of dirt mixed into it. So you know what they call this when it's a mixture of snow and dirt? They call it snurt. So for those of you that aren't snowmobilers, now you know that term, snurt. But anyways, we had a few miles of this, so I just wanted to clue this in the video to show you. I don't like riding in this, but I didn't really have a choice. It's about 36 degrees here and uh, trails are deteriorating fast so we had a change of plans but we're going to keep riding and um, still going to be a good day. We got over what 130 miles in so we're going to keep on sledding. It's a good looking snowmobile right there. 
we probably had about 10 to 15 miles of this so we got out of it pretty quick got back into some better snow uh, caught up to a trail groomer and we worked our way back to Newberry Once we got out of Paradise the Waves, found this little area. I remember coming through here before, but uh, nothing real too exciting to play with here. This was all tracked up pretty good, but wanted to get a few drone shots, so I was able to pop the drone up here. And as you can see, got some trail footage. But the trails look pretty good. You can see the snow looks a lot better, so definitely made for some better riding and getting the snowmobiles back into some white stuff and not so much of the brown. And of course, we're now getting well into Friday afternoon here, so we're starting to see a lot more snowmobilers. A lot of guys come up for the weekends or a long weekend, kind of like we did, so definitely uh, snowmobile traffic increases, but hey, it still wasn't too bad. getting close to six o'clock we made it back to Newberry and you can see things are getting tracked up pretty good this is a high traffic area so no surprise here with the temperature being 36 degrees whatever but uh, we're gonna uh, part of the trail goes through town here we got to stop at the gas station fill our snowmobiles up we're gonna load them up on the trailer we're actually gonna trigger the snowmobiles out to ride tomorrow instead of trying to ride from the hotel so anyways got a surprise got something really cool something you might not normally see in a snowmobile video so stay tuned for tomorrow's ride
And here comes another trail groomer. It's a little thin right here, so I'm not sure what he's going to do, what his plan is. It's supposed to freeze down tonight, so I was going to say, if you're going to ride here tomorrow morning, you probably want to start early because it's supposed to get warm again tomorrow. We made it back to the hotel. We're going to load the snowmobiles up, but here is today's GPS loop of where we rode for a grand total of 181 miles. That red light is my low oil light, so uh, on this riot, when I get down a quart and a half, the low oil light comes on, but it holds a total of four quarts, so nothing to worry about there. That's a good looking truck right there. Good looking snowmobile trailer, too. Oh, look at that. No fuel on, no freeze up here. The doors on the snowmobile trailer froze the night before it got really cold. When we got back late, it was about 9.30. They were froze. We had to work hard to get the trailer opened up. Not so much today. And here we are Saturday morning at America's Best Value Inn in Newberry. We are checking out of the hotel. It's supposed to get warm today, so we are going to trailer east. It's actually snowing in the very eastern part of the UP, so we are going to trailer over there and do some riding over that way. And when we get done, we're going to load up and we're going to start heading back towards Ohio. Let's take a look at some of the snowbills around. There was a lot of people here, as you can see. A lot of riders. I believe the hotel was sold out with snowmobilers. It's quite noisy here last night, but I was tired, so I slept. But I got a really funny story. At least I thought it was funny. So Thursday night, we rode to about 9.30. So we loaded the snowmobiles up. I had my helmet off, so I'm carrying my helmet. Got all my gear on. I'm coming up the elevator to the second floor. And when the elevator door opens, this guy jumps out at me and yells, Boo! Well... He scared me a little bit, but I think I scared him worse because he grabbed my arm. He goes, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. His wife went out to the pickup truck to get something, and he thought she was coming up the elevator, and he scared the wrong person. So it was pretty funny. Overall, though, I think Michigan kind of had a tough year. I don't think they got the normal amount of snow they normally get. I know the season started late here. I don't think there was really any December riding. Not a lot of January riding because winter came kind of late this year. So the lake effect snow that they normally get, I don't believe they got that this year. They got a couple of the systems that come through, storms and so forth. But I think the lake effect snow was really, really down this year, which uh, is too bad. But the restaurants just got opened up and stuff here, too, that were closed down. So... I guess the timing was good for that, but there was limited seating, so we did have to wait to get into some restaurants to eat and whatnot. But uh, overall, had a good time up here in Newberry, and um, yeah, we're going to venture off and ride somewhere else. And I wonder what this weirdo's up to right here.
They got an inch to two inches of fresh snow over here in the very eastern part of the UP late last night or early this morning. And we are going to Detour Village. We're going to unload the snowmobiles, put them on the ferry, and ride the island. A couple different ways you can do this. You can unload, ride your snowmobile on. You can get in line like these people are. You can drive your truck and trailer on, your car, whatever. But we're going to go down here to this parking lot, unload the sleds. The ferry leaves here every hour and uh, gets to the other side, loads people up, and brings them back. So if you miss one ferry, you have to wait one hour to catch the next one. We are ready to go. We made it back to Detour Village. We rode here the other day from Newberry, but we actually trailered over here today. We're gonna get our sleds loaded on the boat. We're gonna head over to the island and there's supposed to be a 50 mile trail loop over there. We're gonna ride over there, check it out, and uh, hopefully be back here in a couple hours.
believe there's more than 50 miles of trails over here. That's just what I was told. But we are very close to Canada at this point. And I think there was a time when you actually ride the ice over to the Manitoula Islands of Ontario, Canada. Of course, this year with COVID, uh, that involves another trail sticker and so forth. So this year, that is not possible. some good snow conditions over here there's a couple places where it was a little bit sketchy there's a lot of rock on this island so this is definitely not a place where you want to jump off the trail because you don't know what's underneath there but uh anyways uh we got behind a group of two up sleds were going kind of slow i had to put my uh, scratchers down to uh what these do is throw more snow up into the track and so forth and uh aid in cooling and whatnot all the snowmobiles so this is the first time i actually had to use these on this snowmobile but we're going to fold them up here to show you what they do but uh, these are for low snow or hard snow conditions where you're not getting a lot of snow up there to uh, help with the cooling of your snowmobile. They also aid in lubrication for your high facts or your track sliders. we ride the trail Scott normally takes the lead well we made the loop on the island here and Scott got so far ahead of us and never stopped at any intersections or anything to wait for us so he missed the turn to come back to the ferry here so it's 2 10 in the afternoon Dale and I are here we tried calling Scott of course he didn't answer he's evidently lost somewhere on the island so we agreed we're gonna take the ferry over here we can at least get our snowmobiles loaded on the trailer and hopefully he'll be here for the next one and sure enough get to the other side and Scott calls us he's lost he's afraid he's gonna run out of gas but he did make the 310 ferry and made it back safe and sound I think I was going to say something, but I forget what it was. This was definitely something different on a snowmobile trip and it was pretty cool so I'm actually glad I did it. It was worth the 10 bucks round trip to haul your snowmobile across.
be blocking his view. And here's our GPS map for Saturday. So this is when we left the hotel in Newberry over to Detour Village and then around Drummond Island for a grand total of 68.7 miles. Had a pretty good day over here and I use a Garmin InRange Explorer, a handheld GPS device. My wife got it for me for Christmas a few years ago and uh, I really like it for out west, especially in the Rocky Mountains when you're really remote and uh, if you did have an emergency situation you can also send an SOS on and so forth. So definitely uh, some of the gear every snowmobile or especially backcountry snowmobiler should have. And one hour later, here is the next ferry. Scott is supposed to be on here, so let's see. And that's going to do it for our snowmobile adventure here in Michigan. It was a good, solid several days of riding here. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Feel free to hit that like button and comment below and stay tuned. I have one more snowmobile trip planned for Wyoming. Now I better get busy making those farm videos too. It's almost planting time some places. And we decided we're going to make the loop back to Ohio. Once we cross the bridge here, as you're going to see, um, we looked at some of the trails here in the Lower Peninsula and things were getting pretty uh, pretty bad here. So I think the snowmobile season is going to be coming to an end here in a lot of Michigan. But uh, anyways, here's some views of the bridge as we cross back into the Lower Peninsula. It's a beautiful day and people are out here enjoying it. So here we are just coming across the bridge back into Mackinac City. I'd like to just thank everybody one more time for watching this video. A lot of times these snowmobile videos don't get near the views that my farm videos do, but they do take a lot of time to edit and put together, so I certainly appreciate that. And uh, I do have one more snowmobile trip planned for the winter here. Hope to get out to Wyoming. I'm going to take the new Arctic Cat Riot out there, and I will include some links here at the end of this video, as you should see popping up here, of some of my other snowmobile adventures from this year. Thanks again, everybody.